So do we need to turn? How how, how high do we want these? Test, test, test. Test, test. Test, test. Is that too much or is that all right? Test, test. Test, one, two, three. The Kentucky Center for Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner, is now Clear Choice Orthodontics. Why the name change, you ask? Well, we believe that there is only one choice for all your orthodontics needs, and that choice is clear. Clear Choice Orthodontics. We offer a unique level of care for each smile in your family. We also feature the latest in Invisalign technology and Invisalign teen. Put our award-winning experience to work for you. For a lifetime of beautiful smiles, come visit the most outstanding orthodontist in Kentucky, Clear Choice Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner. Test, test. You all right? Can you hear? I'm good. I'm a little loud, I think. Where is that? You got Central somewhere? I'll write it down. By the numbers, Whitaker Bank loves the Kentucky communities we serve. Over 30,000 Kentuckians are saving yep. time and money by doing their banking online with Whitaker Electronic Banking. 341,000 transactions were made on the go last year using the Whitaker Bank mobile app. Over 340,000 text alerts were sent last year with Whitaker Dr. Bank Tom text Lyon? banking. We share your passion, Kentucky. Love the bank that loves you back. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. That's in Frankfurt, isn't it? Hmm. Scott County Physical Therapy is a privately owned physical therapy practice specializing in outpatient orthopedics, sports and industrial rehab, neurological rehabilitation, low back pain, neck pain, and arthritic conditions. Our mission is to provide the highest quality physical therapy to assist each individual and the community at large. Scott County Physical Therapy, a journey to wellness. To contact the physical therapist and Scott County Physical Therapy, please dial 502-863-4242. Scott County Physical Therapy is the title sponsor for Scott County Athletics. So this is Thomas. Uh, Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the 11th Region Baseball Tournament, Chuck Stivers Field on the campus of Henry Clay High School. Second game of the day, Woodford County runner-up in the 44th, or excuse me, the 41st District. They come with a record of 9-20. and 20. They'll be taking on the Madison Central Indians. Winners of the 44th District. They come in with a record of 30 and 6. Head coach Steve Roof brings his team in ranked number 5 in the coaches poll, but they're ranked number 1 in the state according to True Rank. So very very impressive record for head coach Steve Roof, probably the favorite after the results of the first game where Lafayette took it on the chin against Sayre. Final score of that one 6 to 2, a pretty good ball game there coach. Tied 1-1 one to one going into the top of the seventh. Sayre come in, had bases loaded, one out. Aiden Elias was 3-for-3 three three in the ball game. He came up and struck out on a 3-2 pitch. Probably would have been ball four. Michael Flora comes up with a full count, hits a line drive down the right field line. It's about six inches foul. He comes back and gets a walk, and then after that point, Sayre was able to score four more runs. They go into the bottom of the seventh inning, up 6-1. to one. Aiden Elias gives up one, but his Sayre Spartans advance with the final score of six to two. Woodford County, the visitors on the scorebook, leading off for the Yellow Jackets. The shortstop, number two, Morgan Sheets, batting second. The second baseman, number 44, Nate Beavers. Hitting in the three spot, the pitcher, number 32, Blake Hacker. 
Batting in the fourth spot, the designated hitter, number 20, Colin Enlow. Hitting in the fifth spot, wearing number 99, the third baseman, Andy Kiever. Batting in the sixth spot, the catcher, number three, Hunter Hilbert. Batting in the seventh spot, the first baseman, number 24, Clay Rouse. In the eighth spot, the right fielder, number 27, Matt Eldridge. And batting in the ninth spot, the left fielder, number five, Parker Thomas. Playing center field for the Indians, but not hitting, number 33, Alex Neff. The starting lineup for the Indians of Madison Central, again, with a record of 30-6. and six. Batting f- first, the second baseman, number 16, Joe Holbrook. Hitting in the two spot, number 23, Nick Cavanaugh, the third baseman. Batting third, the right fielder, number 14, Josh Wright. Hitting in the four spot, the center fielder, number eight, Ben Morin. Batting in the fifth spot, number 13, Austin Alexander, the designated hitter. Hitting in the sixth spot, the first baseman, number 26, 27, Isaac Swafford. Batting in the seventh spot, the left fielder, Seth Richardson. In the eighth spot, Corey Mullins, the catcher. Batting in the ninth spot, Jacob Frazier, the shortstop. And pitching, Jeremy Lakes for Madison Central. And coach, let's do this. Let's talk a little bit about Madison Central. Pretty good ball club, aren't they? Uh, yes. You know, they're not going to have anybody on the mound that's uh, overpowering, that's, you know, the, the upper 80s type fastball kid. Uh, they're going to have they're going to have uh, guys that throw strikes, right. locate uh, hard to their glove side, and they're going to play probably uh, the best defense in the tournament. They, they, they're – they, you know, really do a great job of uh, fielding ground balls, catching ground balls, and then, uh, you know, opportunistic type hitters. Uh, usually, some guys out there that can run. Uh, you know, especially with a guy like Ben Morin out in center field, that uh, when he gets on, takes a, you know, got a really good chance of stealing some bases. But uh, you know, for the most part, uh, a solid baseball team that's not going to beat themselves. If you're going to beat Madison Central, you're going to have to beat them. Uh, they're not going to do anything to lose the game. And now when you talk about Woodford County, you look at them 9-20 and 20 in the season. They come in and upset Franklin County, I think, over in the uh, 41st district to get into the finals against Western Hills. But, Coach, they come in with a record of 9-20. and 20. Not quite up to the par level of Sayre, who's a really good ball club, but we just saw in the last game anything happening in the 11th region. Well, here's what here's – what you know, happened and what happened in the Franklin County game. Uh, Woodford County has got Hiker on the mound today, and, you know, he's an upper 80s guy. And so anytime you put a guy out on the mound that can get it up over 85 to 86, 88 miles an hour, right? Uh, it's going to give your team a chance. So, you know, it's one of those things that uh, the longer the game goes on, the longer Woodford County is able to stay in and hold in the game, uh, the more confidence they're going to gain. So, you know, it's important for them to hang in the game as long as they can. Get it just like Sayre did, one-to-one there in the sixth, seventh inning, and anything can happen from there. So, uh, you know, and it, for Madison Central, they need to try to throw an early knockout blow, uh, you know, have a have a big crooked number inning, that three, four, five run inning, uh, and then that would, you know, uh, kind of take the wind out of their sails. But, you know, the big thing about, uh, about Wood, Woodford, just like I said, You know, they haven't got the best record in the world, but I think they've lost six or seven one-run games. Right. You turn those games around, then their record looks a lot different. And they got a guy on the mound going on the mound today that uh, gives them a shot. Yeah, speaking of the pitching staff for Madison Central, starting for the Indians, Jeremy Lakes, a 5'7", 130-pound senior. Very impressive record. 5-1, has a 1.65 ERA. He's pitched 42.1 innings this year. Coach, here's the most impressive part about Jeremy Lakes. 33 strikeouts to only seven walks. That's, that's over four to one. That's yeah. really impressive at any they're level. Gonna, just like all Madison Central, they're going to throw strikes. Lakes is usually uh, their everyday shortstop. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's their number two, three pitcher, whatever it might be. Uh, they got a kid named Holbrook that's a really good pitcher for him. But uh, uh, Lakes is their everyday shortstop. You know, the thing about having your everyday shortstop out on the mound, he's a good athlete, can feel bunts, field his position, and uh, – you know, really give you the opportunity uh, to do some things defensively uh, because you're so athletic out there on the mound. All righty, defensive lineup for the Indians over at third base, Nick Cavanaugh, the shortstop, Jacob Frazier, the second baseman, Joe Holbrook. Over at first base, Isaac Swafford. Out in left field, Seth Richardson. Ben Morin, Manning center field. Josh Wright over in right field, catching 
is Corey Mullins. And on the mound, as you mentioned, the athlete Jeremy Lakes leading off for the Yellow Jackets. The shortstop, Morgan Sheets, comes in with a batting average of 330. Nate Be Beavers is on deck. Blake Hiker in the hole. First pitch from Lakes, the windup and the pitch. Swing fouled straight back. So first pitch swinging, Morgan Sheets. Lakes gets the sign. Quick motion, outside corner. Strike to the call. And you'll, you'll see that uh, he's going to work fast, and, and what Madison Central tries to do, they're going to throw away, 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 and really try to control their, their, their glove side uh, location. Pretty good official behind the plate this game, isn't it, Coach? Scott Allison, yeah, he's uh, – you know, all three of these, all four of these guys are good officials. They wouldn't be here if they weren't. Ground ball to the right side. Joe Holbrook up with the catch. Easy toss over to Isaac Swafford. One up, one down. And like you said, Coach, one thing about Madison Central and pretty much any team to be successful in the 11th region and, and moving on to the state tournament, you got to make the plays you can make. You get, cannot make errors. If you do that, you got a chance. Yeah, you, if you if your pitcher throws strikes and you catch the balls you're supposed to catch, you got to you'll have a chance to win almost every game. Squares around, tries to do a bunt for a hit. Foul straight back. Nate Beavers, the second baseman, only batting 188, the junior. Second pitch, low ball, one. One and one the count here at Chuck Stivers Field on the campus of Henry Clay High School. 11th region baseball action. Mike Ritchie, Scott Willard, William Warfield. Strike called there. Count goes to one and two. Glad to be bringing you high school basketball, 11th region style here on prepspin.com. We're here all day long. Two more games to go outside. Ball two. You have Dave Bryan down at first base. Dave Schneider out at second. Kerry Lyle over at third. He goes sidearm on that one, Coach. A little bit outside, 3-2. Yeah, and you, and you can see that, uh, you know, most everybody, uh, you know, that he's really trying to locate outside to his glove side. 3-2 pitch, swing, hard drive to left field. Going back underneath of it is Seth Richardson. Hit that one on the screw, so to speak, but like you said earlier in the first ball game, you got to hit it pretty good to get it out of this ballpark. You really do. You know, it's, it takes a good poke to get it out of here. Now batting the pitcher, wearing the old school high – High pants, old-fashioned stirrups. Blake Hiker batting 322. The senior wears number 32. Here's the pitch from Lakes. Curveball outside, ball one. You can tell Blake, Blake Hiker is a pretty good athlete batting in the three spot, Coach. Outside corner, Lakes hitting that corner. Evens up the count, one and one. Two outs here, top of the first inning. Woodford County, Madison Central. Foul ball down the right side, out of play. One and two, the count. Coach Justin Royal trying to pull another upset. We've already seen one of them. Of course, if you talk to some of the Sayre fans, they'll say that wasn't an upset, but six to two against the number two team in the state of Kentucky, Lafayette. 2-2 the count. All deuces on the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here's the pitch. Fouled into the net. Almost got the mascot. They've got some ugly blue animal over in the Madison Central <laughs> dugout. Wow. Of course, baseball is a superstitious game. Anything that keeps you winning. He goes sidearm. The number. On the run, Joe Holbrook up and under it, over to Isaac Swarford, three up, three down. So through a half inning, no score. We'll take a time and we'll come back with 11th Region Baseball on PrepSpin.com. By the numbers, Whitaker Bank loves the Kentucky communities we serve. There are 50 Whitaker Bank locations serving Kentucky communities just like mine. 61 Whitaker Bank ATMs throughout Kentucky make getting quick access to cash easy. Whitaker Bank staff serves the needs of nearly 70,000 Kentucky customers every day. 
We share your passion, Kentucky. Love the bank that loves you back. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. The Kentucky Center for Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner, is now Clear Choice Orthodontics. Why the name change, you ask? Well, we believe that there is only one choice for all your orthodontics needs, and that choice is clear. Clear Choice Orthodontics. We offer a unique level of care for each smile in your family. We also feature the latest in Invisalign technology and Invisalign Teen. Put our award-winning experience to work for you. For a lifetime of beautiful smiles, come visit the most outstanding orthodontist in Kentucky, Clear Choice Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner. Welcome back to the 11th Region Baseball Tournament. Mike Ritchie, Scott Willard, William Warfield. We're in the bottom of the first inning here. Woodford County, Madison Central. Special shout out to Rebound Ortho Orthopedics, Dr. Line over in Frankfurt. Scott County Physical Therapy, Scott County Public Library, and Clear Choice Orthodontics, home of Dr. Durbin, Wong, and Garner. So on the mound, Blake Hacker, six foot, 158 pound senior, four and three is his record, 343 ERA. 47 innings pitched, 30 walks, 62 strikes. And, Coach, that one there was just a little bit high. Yeah, it's going to be uh, important for Hacker uh, to get his emotions under control. Uh, you know, the first inning of the regional tournament, you know, he's throwing out there with good velocity, and he's going to throw with good velocity. He's got to be able to find the strike zone early. So on the gun, Coach, they had him at 79 miles an hour on that first one. He finds himself behind in the count. Two balls, no strikes to the leadoff hitter, Joel Holbrook, batting 373 for the Indians. Taken all the way, 3-0. So not the start that the Woodford County wanted. As Blake Hacker finds himself behind the count, 3-0, taken all the way, is Joel Holbrook, and he's going to take a walk. That'll bring up Nick Cavanaugh, the third baseman, batting 296. The senior, pretty good hitter, a lot of speed. The defensive lineup four, Woodford County, Alex Kiever at third, Morgan Sheets at short, Nate Beavers at second, Clay Rouse at first. Here's the pitch. He squares around, taking all the way. Strike one, the call. Out in the outfield, over and left, you got Parker Thomas, Alex Neff playing defense, not hitting today. He's out in center field. Matt Eldridge is the right fielder. The catcher is Hunter Hilbert, and on the mound, Blake Hiker. 0-1 ahead in the count. Got Joe Holbrook over at first base. Nate Cavan or Nick Cavanaugh, excuse me, waits for the pitch. Curveball around the helmet, and the count evens up 1-1. One one. Sometimes, Coach, if you can effectively be wild, it helps you and it comes to your advantage, but you got to find the plate every now and then. Right, you, you got to be around it. You know, if you cut a few loose that are – Really wild, but if you can get back in on the plate. Popped up to the right side, out of play, and the count goes to one and two. And I know Coach Roof is uh, talking to him about uh, the pitch they need to stay off with off of is the elevated pitch just because it's very hard to get to. Guys throwing with good velocity out there. And most of the time you swing at that elevated pitch, you're either going to swing and miss it or pop it up. Here's the hacker pitch. Off to the races. And out is Joe Holbrook. Great throw there from the catcher, Hunter Hilbert. So it's going to be two to four, or excuse me, two to six. One out. Nothing like that racing the walk right there. Stolen base attempt by Joe Holbrook. Great throw by Hunter Hilbert. Morgan Sheets was at the bag and got him before he got there. So one out, two, two pitch. Swing straight through it and the strikeout. Oh, momentum changed just a little bit on that one right there. Two outs. Yeah, and, and just like I said, Hacker's got enough velocity to really be able to compete in this game. He's just got to be able to throw strikes. Now batting the left-handed hitting Josh Wright, the right fielder, batting 378, a junior. Where's number 14, first pitch. High in the air. Looks like they're going to have room. Matt Eldricks on the run in foul territory. And the first baseman, Clay Rouse, almost made a nice now he's working on his second one. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Curveball in the dirt. Count evens up one and one. 
and, it, and you can tell Hacker has really good stuff. I mean, that curveball had a lot of late, late break on it, a lot of bite. Here's the 1-1 one, one release. High, ball two. Coach David Withers coaching third base for the Indians. Nick Barty over at first base. Coach Roof made the decisions to stay in the dugout as the head coach. We'll talk about that more here in a minute. A line drive foul down the right field line. And Coach, I know you at Scott County, you coach third base, but what's some of the reasons that you might want to stay in the dugout if you're the head coach? Well, just to uh, talk to the hitters right before they go up and kind of tell them what the situation is and uh, make sure that everybody's on the same page that you're on. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch, two outs, curveball, ground ball to Nate Beavers. He's up with it over to Rouse for the third out of the inning. So one inning's in the book here in the second game of the 11th Region Baseball Tournament here at Chuck Stivers Field. You're watching the game on prepspin.com. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back for the second right after this. Summer Heroes Read. Summer Reading kicks off at Scott County Public Library May the 31st. Don't miss Superhero Story Times for Children. For teens, check out the White Hat Computer Hacking Class, Super Villain Costume Party, and Running the City Police Obstacle Course. Adults enjoy free Wi-Fi, computer access, books, movies, and music. Relax and recharge at the Scott County Public Library. Check us out at www.scottpublive.org. Scott County Physical Therapy is a privately owned physical therapy practice specializing in outpatient orthopedics, sports and industrial rehab, neurological rehabilitation, low back pain, neck pain, and arthritic conditions. Our mission is to provide the highest quality physical therapy to assist each individual and the community at large. Scott County Physical Therapy, a journey to wellness. To contact the physical therapist and Scott County Physical Therapy, please dial 502-863-4242. Scott County Physical Therapy is the title sponsor for Scott County Athletics. Welcome back to PrepSpin.com here. 11th Region Baseball Tournament, Chuck Stivers Field. No score after one here. Woodford County getting ready to come to the bat. Madison Central out in the field defensively. Colin Enlow, the designated hitter, takes the first pitch from Lake. Lakes, strike one, the call. Colin Enlow batting 440, a junior. Here's the 0-1 pitch outside. Count evens up one and one. The one thing, you look at Jeremy Lakes, you look at him being 5'7", you don't think he can get it there as fast as he can. It's a little bit surprising. Got a really good arm and, uh, you know, he's a uh, – with... There's the swing and the pitch. Ben Moore and off to the races, runs back to the warning track. That ball would have been out of a lot of other parks, but not here. F8 and a great play by Ben Moore, and he got a great jump on it. Actually went full stride, took his eye off the baseball to get yeah. back to the warning track. Great play by the center fielder. Ben Moore has been a three-year starter for Madison Central and one of the better players in the region. Now batting Adam Kiever, 340 hitter, playing third base today. Where's 99? Getting ready for that softball career after his high school career, college career is over with. First pitch outside corner. Strike one called. Lake's living on that outside corner so far through an inning. Ground ball, Jacob Frazier. The easiest ground ball you can get, and sometimes those are the hardest. So we're going to say an E6. Uncharacteristic error for Madison Central. Let's Andy Kiever reach first base. That'll bring up the catcher, Hunter Hilbert, batting 208. Great play there to... Throw out the leadoff runner, Joe Holbrook, for the Indians on a still attempt. Andy over as a result of a Madison Center error by the shortstop. Hilbert, first pitch outside, ball one. Coach Justin Royal. Over in the third base box for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah. 
Lake's taking his time. Finally sets and releases. Outside corner, fastball. It's about the fifth one of those so far through two innings. Strike one the call, one and one. Woodford County won the state championship in 2012. Madison Central coach back in 1982, undefeated. Yeah, I saw. Uh, Outside. Walking in the ballpark today, Coach Don Richardson, who coached that that team. I don't know if uh, Coach Parrott's here today, but uh, could have two uh, former state championship coaches here. That was a great season for Woodford County back in 2012. Everything just kind of lined up for them. And they earned their way, got there and won it. Beat Henderson County, shut out Henderson County, a good Henderson yeah. County team in the championship game. Two and one is the count. Jeremy Lakes trying to keep Andy Kiever close at first base. Lakes throws it outside, just missed, and the count goes three and one. Glad you could join us here on prepspin.com. We bring you all the 11th Region Baseball Tournament. Three more games today, including this one. Hopefully two tomorrow and the championship game on Wednesday. Foul tip into the mid, and the count goes full, three and two. Well, the one thing about uh, Lakes, he pitches, backs right up to the mound, and he doesn't waste any time. He wants to get that ball back and throw it as quickly as he possibly can. And you know, Coach, as a – as a coach, me, a former pitching coach, one of the things you hate is for that pitcher to walk out in front of the dirt, get on the grass, catch the ball, turn around and walk. Seems like it takes it forever, and Jeremy Lake's just the opposite. Kiever fakes the run on the pitch, but a ball in the dirt, so I'll walk. You know, the to two, Hunter Hilbert. The two things, and, and Madison Central could get themselves out of this inning, but the, the two things he said couldn't happen – where we got to catch the balls you're supposed to catch and not walk people. This inning they've had an error and a walk. So, uh, you know, flirting with a little bit of disaster here uh, in this inning just because of the fact that uh, it's all been self-inflicted. Harrison Keith, runner for the catcher over at first base. So Harrison Keith in to run for Hunter Hilbert. So 1-0 is the count, one out here in the top of the second inning. Woodford County trying to make a little noise. They got Andy Keever down at second base. Harrison Keith over at first. One at first with one out. Kavanaugh even with a bag at third. Fly ball out to left field. On his horses is Seth Richardson. He runs it down for the second out of the inning. And the runner is forced to stay. When that one was first hit, you thought it might have been just a little bit of a bloop, but great play by Seth Richardson. Yeah, got a real good jump on it, you know, off the end of the bat, trying to take that outside pitch and pull it, got it off the end of the bat and softly flew out to left field. Now batting the 200, 248 hitter, the right fielder, Matt Eldridge. Where's number 27, the senior? Base hit might get a run in with Andy Keever down at second base. Pickoff play. Keever's just in, and one thing you want to do, if you're a coach for Woodford County, you want him to get down. Lake's very patient out on the mound, finally in the windup. First pitch fouled straight back. Matt Eldridge, the right fielder, first plate appearance of the ball game. Hats off to Jordan Terrence and the Henry Clay Athletic Department. Field in great shape today, isn't it, Coach? Yeah, it looks really nice. And, uh, uh, you know, ever since I've been coming over here since about 2005, Henry Clay's baseball fields always look great. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Ground ball. Jacob Frazier up. Flips it over to Joe Holbrook for the fielder's choice in the third out of the inning. So one and a half innings in the book. Woodford County threatens but doesn't score. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back for the bottom of the second right after this on PrepSpin.com, 11th Region Baseball Tournament. The Kentucky Center for Orthodontics, home of Doctors Durbin, Wong, and Gardner, is now Clear Choice Orthodontics. Why the name change, you ask? Well, we believe that there's only one choice for all your orthodontics needs, and that choice is clear. 
Clear Choice Orthodontics. We offer a unique level of care for each smile in your family. We also feature the latest in Invisalign technology and Invisalign team. Put our award-winning experience to work for you. For a lifetime of beautiful smiles, come visit the most outstanding orthodontist in Kentucky, Clear Choice Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner. I just saw it. What do I do with it? What are you looking for? The ad. Here it is. By the numbers, oh, Whitaker Bank loves the Kentucky communities we serve. Over 30,000 Kentuckians are saving time and money by doing their banking online with Whitaker Electronic Banking. 341,000 transactions were made on the go last year using the Whitaker Bank mobile app. Over 340,000 text alerts were sent last year with Whitaker Bank text banking. We share your passion, Kentucky. Love the bank that loves you back. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. Welcome back to the 11th Region Baseball Tournament. Ben Moore in leading off the inning. First pitch from Blake Hacker. A little bit high, gets past the catcher. Ball one. Ben Moore in the center fielder made a nice defensive play early in the ball game on a deep fly to dead center field. That one there, I think that was into the mid before he swung. Nice pitch by Blake Hacker. Yeah, and it just takes the discipline to be able to stay off that elevated pitch. I know as, as kids, it, it looks good to them. It's right up there where they can get a good look at it. That pitch right there, same location. Warren just lays off of it, and the count goes two and one. Austin Alexander, the designated hitter on deck. Isaac Swafford, the first baseman, in the hole. Fouled straight back, and the count goes two two. I'd like to wish our buddy Gary Ball quick recovery. A little bit of a medical issue, nothing, nothing major, but dealing with it, not able to get here today. Hopefully he'll be able to join us for the rest of the broadcast tomorrow and Wednesday. Gary only comes in for the big games yeah. anyway, doesn't he? Well, I wasn't going to say that, but since you mentioned it, when you think high school sports, especially around this area and even in the state, you think of Gary Ball calling a ball game, nothing better. Wow, that one's way up there causing problems. Morgan Sheets did a great <laughs> job. Andy Kiever was underneath of it. Morgan Sheets said, get out of the way. When he first called for it, he was standing at shortstop. By the time he caught it, he was about 15 feet off the line. But F6 in the books. Austin Alexander batting 333 on the season, the designated hitter. The senior batting from the right side. Here's the one-out pitch. Fastball high, ball one. We can see that the, just like in the first game, that you know, it's ball two there, but the wind just blowing around everywhere and just it really affected that pop up in the 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 last time. You know, it went last game from blowing out the end to straight across. Yep, still blowing straight across. Mm -hmm. Right field to left field. Ball three as Hackers lost a little bit of the control he had. Yeah, and it looks like that's going to be a key for Madison Central is to be able to be patient, swing it, swing at pitches that that you can hit. Don't don't chase don't chase bad balls. Here's a 3-0 pitch outside. Four pitch walk. To Austin Alexander. That'll bring up Isaac Swafford. The first baseman batting 286, the senior, hitting from the left side. Two more good ball games. Western Hills takes on LCA at 4 p.m. Join William Warfield for the call, that one. And then the nightcap, Henry Clay taking on model at 7. Alexander with a pretty good lead. Hacker decides to throw back. Over to Rouse. Alexander in easily. So five straight balls. You know, Hacker looks a little frustrated out there. He needs to kind of step back off the mound, gain his composure, and get himself back in the strike zone. There he goes. The sixth pitch is the magic pitch, Coach, as he gets a strike one called. And just like you said, you know, you, you look at him throw out there. His stuff is, is good enough. 
And he's just got to be able to get his, his good stuff in the strike zone. Count goes to two and one. And you can tell that, uh, you know, he's wanting to do good. There's a little bit of frustration out there when he can't get the ball. Right now he can't locate the ball where he wants to locate it. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Off the hands. Nobody's going to be at first. They're going to get a fielder's choice. As Alexander and Roush kind of ran into each other, you're going to get a 4-6 fielder's choice for the second out. Swaffer to reach first base on that fielder's choice. And they might they were going to call maybe. Oh, somebody uh, ran into a fielder out there as he was going after the ball. Well, Alexander took off, and he ran into Roush as Roush was turning around to go for the baseball ball. I would call that incidental contact. I mean, the out's made. I mean, if they call interference with the runner, he's out, right, Coach? Right. And you end up in the same situation you were in that the batter gets first base. I think they're just talking about where they're going to go eat after the ball game. So two outs here in the bottom of the second inning. Seth Richardson, the left fielder, made a nice defensive play. Down the line in left field. Batting 310, the junior. Isaac Swafford, the first baseman, on first base for the Indians. Fastball high. He's, he's been up there all day, hadn't he? Yeah. You know, and here's what might happen. You know, he's so – so jacked up, so full of adrenaline. You know, a lot of times as the game goes on, you get a little bit tired. You know, some of that stuff starts coming down and you start locating the ball a little bit better. Especially, I've seen pitchers as they get as they start to fatigue a little bit, their breaking ball gets better. Yep. 1-1 one, one count. And, Coach, let's be honest. He was here, saw Sayre upset Lafayette. He's probably saying, hey, I've got a shot, and that's probably right. got him pumped up just a little bit more. Oh, right in the head. Seth Richardson hit by pitch. You could tell he wasn't scared of it with the curveball. He was going to let it hit him, but I don't think he meant intended for him to hit him in the helmet as he goes down to first base. And Coach Steve Roof, Nick Barty over there checking on the young man. I think you'd have to force him out of the ball game. They're going to check him. The trainer's going to check him real quick. Yeah, I mean, anytime you get uh, hit in the head, there's all this uh, concussion protocol that you have to go through to make sure that uh, – you know, have the trainer look at you and make sure that uh, you don't have some type of concussion-like symptoms that uh, uh, would keep you from continuing safely. Well, he answered the question. He passed the test. Corey Mullins, the catcher, batting 222 on the season. Madison Central doing the same thing Woodford County did. Two runners on here, two outs in the second inning. First pitch in the dirt. Swafford down at second base. Richardson over at first base. Corey Mullins, the catcher. Ahead in the count, 1-0. Two outs here, bottom of the second inning. Hacker lets it go, outside corner. And one thing about Scott Allison, he's very, very consistent, but he'll give you an inch or two off that outside corner, especially they if you're will. consistent of, and hit the spot. Most of the umpires in this region will. Uh, Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside, ball two. Two and one the count. But we're not going that far out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I can, you know, you look at Hacker and his stuff, I think he's like three and two or something on the season where, you know, he could have games where he could get himself in trouble, four and three on the season, he could get himself in trouble with his control a little bit. Uh, but, you, you know, you could tell when he's on, he could be really tough to hit. Two outs here. The count, two and two. Corey Mullins batting 222, so a, a bucket of twos going on at the ballpark. Outside, he reaches for it and strikes out swinging. So three outs. And Madison Central strands two runners. So through two complete, we're scoreless here in the 11th Region Baseball Tournament. Woodford County zero, Madison Central zero. We'll be back on PrepSpin.com right after this. 
Summer Heroes Read. Summer Reading kicks off at Scott County Public Library May the 31st. Don't miss Superhero Story Times for Children. For teens, check out the White Hat Computer Hacking Class, Super Villain Costume Party, and Running the City Police Obstacle Course. Adults enjoy free Wi-Fi, computer access, books, movies, and music. Relax and recharge at the Scott County Public Library. Check us out at www.scottpublive.org. By the numbers, Whitaker Bank loves the Kentucky communities we serve. Over 30,000 Kentuckians are saving time and money by doing their banking online with Whitaker Electronic Bank. 340. Thousand transactions were made on the go last year using the Whitaker Bank mobile app. Over 340,000 text alerts were sent last year with Whitaker Bank text banking. We share your passion, Kentucky. Love the bank that loves you back. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. Welcome back to the 11th Region Baseball Tournament. Mike Ritchie, Scott Willard, William Warfield. Proud to be bringing you the baseball action live on the internet on prepspin.com. Two innings in the books. We're scoreless. Not much action going on. Both teams stranded two runners in the second inning. Still no hits for either squad. Parker Thomas, the left fielder, leading off, hitting 267. First pitch, swing and a miss. After Thomas, we'll be back to the top of the lineup with Morgan Sheets, Nate Beavers. All speed pitch outside, ball one. Well, you can see what, you know, just like we mentioned earlier, Lakes throws that ball and backs right up to the mound. He's ready to throw again. Here's the type of picture you like playing defense behind. Oh, yes. Here's the 1-1, one, one. swing and a miss, off speed pitch. Look like a change. And that pitch probably looked about the size of a watermelon coming in. It was off speed right down the middle of the plate. The catcher sets up outside, ball two. Count goes to two and two, no outs here. Top of the third inning. Woodford County, Madison Central scoreless. Count goes even, three and two. The winner of this one gets the Sayre Spartans. That game will be tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Here's the payoff pitch. Off-speed pitch again, Coach. That's hard to lay off of. It is it? after you throwing that fastball and throwing a big change. And, you, you know, you got to figure what, uh, you know, you talk about we got two more games left after this one and uh, the threat of inclement weather coming in and, you know, how to, you know, what do you do tomorrow? Do you play? There's the bunt. Kavanaugh up. And his throw is high. So that's probably going to be oh, – he's going to try to go to second base. Swafford up with it, and a good hustle there by Morgan Sheets. He's going to get on first base as a result of a throwing error. Now they're going to give him a base hit. So a base hit by Morgan Sheets, the first hit of the ball game. It'll be an E5 on the third baseman, allow him going to second. Caught everybody by surprise there, I think, Coach. That'll bring up Nate Beavers, the second baseman. Watch for him to bunt right here, only batting 188. That's a really good job of of getting the drag bunt down in the right spot. And now Woodford County's got something going here. Kavanaugh even inside the bag at third. So Swafford over at first base. Both of them are almost to the edge of the grass in the cutout. Beavers flew out the left field in the first inning for the second out. But you, you see the way, I don't know if you, if you want to see it on the monitor, the way Kavanaugh's turned sideways. You know, he's making sure that uh, the guy doesn't slip behind him on a fake bunt and steal. You know, he's going to come get the bunt if it's laid down hard, but he's also got to retreat to the bag in case of a steal. So Sheets out at second base, first hit of the ball game, off speed. He pushes it. Lakes picks it up, only one play. That's over to first as he gets it to Swafford. But the runner does advance. That's going to be a sack bunt. 1-3 for the second out of the inning. Yeah, and he was looking really right there, I think, uh, not so much to sack, but to try to push bunt that ball by the pitcher and just didn't get quite enough of it to push it by him. 
So, Coach, what's the advantage right there with two outs runner at second base? Why do you want to bunt in that situation? Well, I've, I think I've, I'm not sure there is an advantage. I just think that he was possibly uh, not so much. Uh-oh, play of the day over there by Justin uh, Royal. Give him a couple of years, Coach. He'll just let those go by, won't he? Oh, exactly. <laughs> those, those, the young guys, they can still do that stuff. Yeah. But I think more than anything, he was trying to get that for a base hit. Yeah. He was trying to bunt that ball for a base hit instead of so much – of a sacrifice. So Blake Hacker ground out to Holbrook in the first inning. Fouls that one back, falls behind the count 0-2. And, and I don't think you want to be 0-2 to Jeremy Lakes. Yeah, and now, he, you know, he's going to go off the plate, either fastball or breaking ball right here. And they might stay away from the breaking ball just to take away the possibility of the ball getting in the dirt and getting by the catcher. Mullen sets up outside. Hacker flips it over to right field, hits in foul territory. Count remains 0-2, two two outs here, top of the third inning. Great day for baseball up to this point, expecting some bad weather coming in here later on, trying to get as many in as possible today. All I can say is if you like doing tarp duty, come on over to Henry Clay High School. Probably going to need you at some point today. They'll only charge you $6 to come in and help with the tarp. Here's the 0-2 pitch, fouled straight back. Mano a mano, Jeremy Lakes, Blake Hacker, the two pitchers battling right here. Morgan Sheets, the shortstop, down at third base, outside. One and two, the count. You know, you know, they went that fastball away off the plate a couple of times there now. Don't be surprised if now they don't come back with the breaking ball on the one-two count. Here's the pitch. You called it. Flips it up to right field. Wright is able to run underneath of it. Josh Wright catches the third out of the inning. F9 in the books. So Woodford County threatens. The Morgan Sheets get stranded down at third base through two and a half. We're still scoreless here on the 11th Region Baseball Tournament, prepspin.com. Back after this. Scott County Physical Therapy is a privately owned physical therapy practice specializing in outpatient orthopedics, sports and industrial rehab, neurological rehabilitation, low back pain, neck pain, and arthritic conditions. Our mission is to provide the highest quality physical therapy to assist each individual and the community at large. Scott County Physical Therapy, a journey to wellness. To contact the physical therapist and Scott County Physical Therapy, please dial 502-863-4242. Scott County Physical Therapy is the title sponsor for Scott County Athletics. Welcome back to the 11th Region Baseball Tournament here at Chuck Stivers Field on the campus of Henry Clay High School. Mike Ritchie, Scott Willard, William Warfield. We're PrepSpin.com, proud to be bringing you high school basketball, or baseball, excuse me, on the internet all season long. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Jacob Frazier, the shortstop, takes the first pitch, ball one. Blake Hiker's been a little bit inconsistent and out of control as he goes 2-0 oh in the count. So, Hacker, here comes the 2-0 pitch. Fastball high. Ball three. And, Coach, how long do you go with a pitcher that's kind of struggling? Well, you know, he's, he's your best, so, you, you know, you give him every opportunity – uh, to to pitch stuff. You know, here's what's happening. is he gets himself in trouble, but he is you know good enough when he does get himself in trouble to you know he can put himself in trouble and throws hard enough to get himself out of trouble with strikeouts. So uh, you know a lot of times with a little bit of wildness, get themselves in trouble. But, uh, you know, he's been able to, uh, with a strikeout in the first and a strikeout 
in the second, you know, ended the end of the inning with uh, a couple guys on base in the second with a strikeout and struck out Kavanaugh uh, after a walk, thrown out stealing, strikeout. So, you know, I think he's fine. I think they're going to go with him for a little bit longer, you know, and just until it gets where it's past the point of. Holbrook squares around the bunt, pulls it back. Four straight balls, and Blake Hacker not happy with that one. He's always a strike all the way. Joe Holbrook let off the ball game with a walk. He got thrown out, trying to steal second. Jacob Frazier down at first base. Holbrook, good bunt. Hacker up with it. Quick throw. Over to Clay Rouse. Advances the runner, so a sack bunt. And here's what happens is, you know, you, you, Coach Roof, he gets himself a little bit in a dilemma in the fact that, uh, you know, you try to bunt, but do we really need to bunt? Is, you know, is he so wild that, you know, we, we bunt a bad pitch? or Right. You know, a lot of, and that's one thing about being in the dugout. He talks to kids over there about, like, okay, we're going to bunt, but mate, you got to make sure you're going to bunt a strike. Don't, don't pop a bunt, ball up that's high. So Nick Cavanaugh now at the plate struck out in the first inning. Outside pitch, ball one. More balls than strikes up to this point for Blake Hacker. He walked the leadoff hitter of the inning, Jacob Frazier, who's now down at second after the sacrifice bunt from the leadoff hitter, Joel Holbrook. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Outside, ball two. And that's the thing, you know, we talked about Scott Allison behind the plate. If you're wild, you're not going to get that pitch off the corner because he's seeing more balls than strikes. Whereas a lot of times these pitchers that paint that corner, you'll get it all day long. Yeah, if you're consistently throwing it there. Now he's up, down, in, out, and you try to pick a guy off center field there. That was a great throw to the center fielder. <laughs> and you can tell just a little bit with hackers, a little bit of nerves out there. You know, spin to throw. You don't have to throw it. Nobody at the bag, but he went on through it anyway. I mean, his walk to strikeout ratio is 2 to 1, 62 strikeouts, 30 walks on the season. There's ball three, and Hiker struggling mentally. And you can see it's getting to him. He's grabbing yeah. the dirt a little bit. And one thing you don't want to do if you're a pitcher is show any emotion. Yeah, and, and, and the thing he's got to realize is right here with an open base, uh, the the walk's not the worst thing in the world right here. Kavanaugh probably taking all the way. Two walks in the inning. The second one will send Kavanaugh down to first base. Out at second is Jacob Frazier. And coach, right here is where you don't want to be as the number three hitter. Batting 378 on the center on the season, the right fielder, Josh Wright. Coach Roof calling signals from the dugout. We saw Woodford County bunt in this situation in the last inning. You think uh, not with a three hitter up right now? I don't think there's any way that Wright's bunting. I had to agree with you. I just had to ask. First thing Hacker's got to do is throw strikes, Coach. Two walks in the inning. Yeah, you, you know when uh, you know he's a little frustrated. He's he's grabbing dirt and and getting a little upset. You know, and, you know he throws a pitch, looks in the dugout. Pitching coach that came out this inning talked to him a little bit. Now the count goes two and zero. Oh. And the thing about it is, you talk about the walks. Jacob Frazier was walked on four pitches. Nick Cavanaugh walked on four pitches. So it's not like you know, the, the hitters are up there, and they're getting very, very patient. Right. And that, that home plate area is, is, is shrinking a whole lot for Mr. Hacker right now. Yeah, if he can just get himself uh, in the strike zone real quick, get himself confidence, get himself going, I think he'll be fine. Just like I've always said, you know, this game, his stuff's good enough. There it is. Whatever Hunter Hilbert told him, it must have worked. Count goes now, to two and one. Don't be surprised if, they, if uh, Madison Central likes to use the the vaulted lead out at second base and if they think they can. They're not going to do it here. They're shortening the guy up. That pitch there looked inside from my vantage point, but strike two the call, two and two. One out here. Two and two, two runners on, on the bags at first and second, one out. Wright stays alive as he fouls it 
out into the parking lot. Good place for, for some fly ball insurance out in that parking lot. That's what I told him earlier today. He called Flo. <laughs> Here comes the 2-2 pitch, one out. It's high off the mat, and the runners will advance. Wild pitch. He reached out and threw that one a little bit hard, didn't he, Coach? Yes. 3 twos the count. Frazier no, advances like, down dude. to third. Kavanaugh down to second. You know, Madison Central, they can get a ground ball here. You're getting ready to score the score the run without the without any hits. The left side moved in, and right does his job as the ball goes off the chest of Nate Beavers, and he's going to be safe. Kavanaugh's trying to come in. Here's the tag. He's out by a mile if he holds on to it. So good job of recovery right there. So Josh Wright's going to get at first base on the air by the second baseman, Nate Beavers. Jacob Frazier is going to score the first run of the ball game. Kavanaugh is going to be thrown out 4-2 for the second out of the inning. So a lot of action, but Madison Central gets the first run of the ball game, and, Coach, that could be a big run. Kind of ease the pressure a little bit, kind of like Sayre did. Once they got the lead, they wind up scoring – Six runs in the inning, or five runs, excuse me. Ball high, two outs. Josh Wright did his job. He rolls the ball to second base. The ball goes off the chest of Nate Beavers. Foul back into the screen. So, Coach, is that an RBI for uh, Josh Wright there on the it air? It is. So, an RBI for Josh Wright. Here's the 1-1 pitch from H Hacker. Ben Morin popped up to the shortstop in the second inning to lead off that inning. Finds himself ahead in the count, 2-1. and one. But Josh Wright down at first base. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Just missed that one. Ben Moore would like to have that one back, I think. Yeah. So hard to, you know, when a guy is consistently throwing on the outside corner or, or whatever he's throwing, it's it's hard to zone in on something on, on Hacker here because, you know, it's just been a little bit of everywhere. Flips it over to first base. I think that was just one of those, Josh Wright, I know you're over there throws. Scoreboard full of deuces. Two and two the count. Two outs here. Top of the fourth inning. Or excuse me, bottom of the third. I'm going to give that a stolen base. Yep. He was going in the catcher just a little too quickly. Tried to jump up there and get the exchange before he actually caught the ball, hit off the heel of his glove, and Wright's in scoring position. So payoff pitch coming here from Blake Hacker. Three and two is the count, two outs. Josh Wright down at second base now. Morin gets underneath of it. Clay Rouse calls it at first base and makes the play. For the third out of the inning, but Madison Central scores one run on no hits. One error. They leave one runner on base. So through three, the score, Henry, or excuse me, Madison Central one, Woodford County zero. We'll be back on prepspin.com. The Kentucky Center for Orthodontics, home of Doctors Durbin, Wong, and Gardner, is now Clear Choice Orthodontics. Why the name change, you ask? Well, we believe that there is only one choice for all your orthodontics needs, and that choice is clear. Clear Choice Orthodontics. We offer a unique level of care for each smile in your family. We also feature the latest in Invisalign technology and Invisalign Teen. 
Put our award-winning experience to work for you. For a lifetime of beautiful smiles, come visit the most outstanding orthodontist in Kentucky, Clear Choice Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner. By the numbers, Whitaker Bank loves the Kentucky communities we serve. There are 50 Whitaker Bank locations serving Kentucky communities just like mine. 61 Whitaker Bank ATMs throughout Kentucky make getting quick access to cash easy. Whitaker Bank staff serves the needs of nearly 70,000 Kentucky customers every day. We share your passion, Kentucky. Love the bank that loves you back. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. Welcome back to the 11th Region Baseball Tournament. We go to the top of the fourth inning here on PrepSpin.com. Jeremy Lakes quickly. First pitch swinging. His calling in low. Easy play by Frazier as he flips it over to Swafford. One out in the inning. One pitch, one out. Coach Roof has to be happy with that one. 6-3 in the book. And that'll bring up Andy Kiever. Kiever reached on an error by the shortstop, Frazier. In the second inning, stranded down at third base. Kiever batting 340 on the season. Second pitch of the inning, outside, ball one. Henry Clay able to scratch the scoring column, and as it happens so much, the run that scores was walked by the pitcher. Blooper out in dead man's alley. The Bermuda Triangle, so to speak, right in front of the center fielder between the shortstop and second baseman. More and up with it. And the first, second hit of the ball game. There's the bad throw into the dugout. So Andy Kiever gets a base hit. The second baseman, Joe Holbrook. See what's going to happen here. Joe Holbrook trying to get Kiever, who he thought was off first base. He throws it high into the dugout. Now they're going to check. The umpire's getting together again, see if the ball was dead and time had been called. They're going to say no, and he's going to let him stay down at second base. So that's going to be an E4. So one out here, a little bit of action. Colin Inlow, first pitch swinging, grounds out to Frazier for the first out of the ball game, or of the inning, excuse me. Andy Kiever gets a blue pit out in front of the center fielder. And for some reason, Joe Holbrook thought he could throw him, throw him out from about 116 feet away. Throws it into the dugout, so Andy, Deaver, Andy Kiever gets second base on the air. So one out. Fastball outside. Ball one, Hunter Hilbert walked in the second inning. Here's the 1-0 pitch outside and in the dirt. And the count goes to 2-0. Madison Central is able to score a run without a base hit in that third inning. Woodford County trying to answer right here. Andy Kiever down at second base. One out, 2-0 the count. Hunter Hilbert squares around the bunt. Taken all the way. Jeremy Lake says, I can throw strikes like that all day long, and the count goes to 2-1. and one. Here's the 2-1 pitch from Lakes. Off-speed pitch, ground ball. Kavanaugh cuts off the shortstop. Comes up with a nice throw to Swafford. Good play by Nick Kavanaugh. As Kiever goes to third on the play. That'll bring up Clay Rouse, the first baseman. Batting 241. Fly ball to the left fielder, Seth Richardson, and Nick Barty comes out to talk with Jeremy Lakes with two outs here. Andy Kiever down at third base. 
So got a lot of conferences going on. Nick Barty comes in. All the infielders and the catcher surround him. Justin Royal, the coach for the Jackets, decides he needs to talk to Clay Rouse over there. So what's Coach Barty talking to his pitcher here with two outs, talking to Jeremy Lakes about? Well, he might be going over uh, the scouting report on on the, the hitter that's at the plate right now, uh, talking to him about, uh, you know, make sure that uh, uh, nothing – we don't get anything down in the dirt with chance with a pass ball and the and a the run there. So uh, – First pitch called strike one to Clay Roush. Andy Keever 90 feet away from tying this ball game up. We're in the top of the fourth inning here on prepspin.com. Just outside, and the count evens up one and one. Jacob Frazier, the shortstop, kind of in about three or four steps closer than normal. Lake goes sidearm and the ball. Chopped a hacker. Chopped a mm -hmm. hacker. <laughs> so here's the one and two pitch, two outs. Jeremy Lakes, the catcher outside, and he decides to hit him right on the elbow. And sometimes you go to that sidearm motion when it's not your normal motion. Sometimes it does get away from you, and it did it right there. It's Clay Rouse. Hitting the elbow, gets a free trip to first base, and that will bring up Matt Eldridge, the right fielder. Reached on the fielder's choice you know, in the second. If uh, Woodford County has got, you know, especially if they get two strikes, got any kind of trickery on first and third, breaking the guy early, going down there, stopping him, Especially if the hitter here at the bottom of the order gets two strikes on him, you might see him put some type of poor Madison Central here. First pitch was high, ball one. To the right fielder, Matt Eldridge. Foul tip into the mitt of Corey Mullins for strike one. Parker Thomas on deck for Woodford County. And he takes off. Lakes is going to step off and fake the throw. Then he throws it again. So that pretty much takes all the trick out of that play, doesn't it? Yeah, faked it the first time to see if he can get the guy from third to break. And uh, that could be a big play right there. So now there's uh, no yeah. fielder's choice. Yeah, with a single here. Uh, and just like you said, no fielder's choice. The infielder's going to have to go across the first base on a ground ball. So, uh, one of those uh, makes the makes the defensive play a little bit more difficult. And probably now single scores two to give Woodford County the lead. So, the count's one and one. We have two outs here in the top of the fourth inning. Clay Roush at second, Andy Kiever at third. And, Coach, I think if he hadn't swung and hit that yeah, one, it probably would have hit him. him. <laughs> and Lakes' is, uh, the last couple of pitches dropped down. Like I said, it runs it back in. You know, usually uh, that ball's working away from the right-hander on the outside corner, but, you know, he drops down and it runs it back in on top of him. So here's the one-two pitch. Runner at second, third. Outside just missed. Fans a little chirpy on that one, Coach. Yeah, and it's, that ball is clearly outside and over in the other batter's box. Just where the catcher sets up, he catches it in the middle of his body and makes it look like a good pitch, but ball's clearly outside. So here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Two outs, two runners on. And he slaps at it and strikes out. So Jeremy Lakes gets out of the inning. No damage done. In the top of the fourth, Mazda Central 1, Woodford County 0, and the Indians Coming up to bat when we're back on PrepSpin.com. 
Summer Heroes Read. Summer Reading kicks off at Scott County Public Library May the 31st. Don't miss Superhero Story Times for Children. For teens, check out the White Hat Computer Hacking Class, Super Villain Costume Party, and Running the City Police Obstacle Course. Adults enjoy free Wi-Fi, computer access, books, movies, and music. Relax and recharge at the Scott County Public Library. Check us out at www.scottpublib.org. Scott County Physical Therapy is a privately owned physical therapy practice specializing in outpatient orthopedics, sports and industrial rehab, neurological rehabilitation, low back pain, neck pain, and arthritic conditions. Our mission is to provide the highest quality physical therapy to assist each individual and the community at large. Scott County Physical Therapy, a journey to wellness. To contact the physical therapist and Scott County Physical Therapy, please dial 502-863-4242. Scott County Physical Therapy is the title sponsor for Scott County Athletics. Welcome back to 11th Region Baseball here on PrepSpin.com. Mike Ritchie, Scott Willard, William Warfield. Glad to be bringing you the 11th Region Baseball Tournament on PrepSpin.com. Check us out. It's two more games here today, two tomorrow, and the championship game on Wednesday. The Indians at bat in the bottom of the fourth inning. First pitch from Hacker called strike one to the designated Alexander. Swing and a miss. You know, I don't know if he, got, you know, just finally got a little edge off or what it was, but I watched Hacker warm up that inning, and the pitches were a lot more down than they had been earlier in, in the day. And it seems like maybe he's uh, finally maybe going to settle in. And you know what? He, he's given up a run, hadn't given up a hit. And, you know, uh, you know, if he can mow along here and keep Madison Central right there where they're at, he's going to give his team a chance. Alexander not even close on that one with the whiff, one out. That will bring up Isaac Swafford, the first baseman. Reached on the fielder's choice, stranded at second in the second inning, hitting from the left side. Uncharacteristic for Madison Central, three errors already, Coach. Really is. And Pitch high, ball one. Looking at your line score, Woodford County, no runs, two hits, one error. Madison Central, one run, no hits, three errors. Hacker hits the inside corner, and the count evens up at one and one. Here's the one-one pitch from Hacker. Fouled back off the left side. Next game up here. Will be Western Hills, the winner of the 41st district, taking on LCA, the runner up in the 43rd district. Join William Warfield with the call. Off speed pitch just outside. Count goes two and two. That game's scheduled first pitch at 4 p.m. Then stick around after that one and join us for Henry Clay taking on Model at seven. Defensive swing by Swafford there keeps alive as he fouls that one back. And boy, Hacker looks a lot better. Looks like a different uh, pitcher, doesn't he? Looks a lot better this inning with uh, his, just his total command and presence out there on the mound. You know, he's back to back strikeouts. And the thing about both those strikeouts, <laughs> both batters were totally confused on the yeah. pitch. <laughs> kind of like half swings for Alexander and Swafford there. That'll bring up Seth Richardson, the left fielder, hitting the helmet his first time up in the second inning, batting 310 on the season. Great crowd here today. You can't tell it from the press box, but I went down there to get a lineup before this game. A lot of people. First pitch called strike. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Just outside, ball one. Here's the 1-1 one, one with two outs. Outside, ball two. Give him a compliment, and he finds the – Yeah, you know, he just – a little – he went strike one and then threw a couple balls, and maybe he's trying to rush to get out of the inning here. But, uh, well, he just looked like to me, he looked like a, like a different guy, those first two hitters. 
Now that's what, uh, one thing that really happens with pitchers. They get two quick outs, and they think, okay, the inning's over, and then they lose their concentration. Yep. Next thing you know, a couple of guys get on base, and you've given up a run, and you had two outs and nobody on. So, Hiker needs to lock himself back in here. And Foul ball. Into the net. Count I mean, goes to full, three and two. You know, something I always call two-out complacency. You know, pitcher go get two quick outs, and then next thing you know, oh, boy, we're, we're here. We're going to have a chance to give up a run here. So the payoff pitch, Hacker from the windup. Richardson just nicked that one. Thank God he wasn't using a 32-ounce bat, or inch bat. He wouldn't have hit that one at all. Count stays full, three and two, two outs here. Bases are empty. Madison Central, two up, two down, both strikeouts, one by Alexander, the other by Swafford. Here's the payoff pitch to Richardson. Out in the Bermuda Triangle, and it falls in. And Richardson hustled all the way, second base, easily on a double. You got to say hats off to Seth Richardson on that one. He was running all the way. Yeah, coming hard out of the box. And really, I thought Alex Neff had a chance to make that play. Got a bad break. So, just like that, that's why they play three outs. Blake Hacker looked dominant the first two batters. Little bloop single. Turns it into double by the hustle of Seth Richardson. That'll bring up the catcher, Corey Mullins. Struck out in the second inning, but a chance to extend the lead with a base hit right here with two outs. First pitch called, strike one. You know, and what uh, Hiker needs is a lot of times, you know, you have different umpires have different zones, and uh, the best thing for Hiker is to find a umpire calls it the top of that zone a strike. Uh, you know, there's some umpires that are low ball guys, some guys that are high ball guys, and if he gets a high ball guy, uh, you know, he could be really dominant. So here's the 0-2 pitch. Richardson gets a good jump and a great play by Roush. Is he going to be able to beat the runner over there? And, yes, he does. Good job of Clay Roush because Seth Richardson, he had that high hop you were talking about. He had third stolen easily. If that ball gets through or if he doesn't get the out, Richardson scores easily. But that's all for naught. That's four innings in the books. The score, Madison Central 1, Woodford County 0. We'll be back on PrepSpin.com. By the numbers, Whitaker Bank loves the Kentucky communities we serve. Whitaker Bank supports 496 Kentucky schools. Over 282,000 students benefit from Whitaker Bank's Kentucky education initiatives. Whitaker Bank has contributed almost $441,000 to education programs for the advancement of Kentucky's youth. We share your passion, Kentucky. Love the bank that loves you back. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. The Kentucky Center for Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner, is now Clear Choice Orthodontics. Why the name change, you ask? Well, we believe that there is only one choice for all your orthodontics needs, and that choice is clear. Clear Choice Orthodontics. We offer a unique level of care for each smile in your family. We also feature the latest in Invisalign technology and Invisalign Teen. Put our award-winning experience to work for you. For a lifetime of beautiful smiles, come visit the most outstanding orthodontist in Kentucky, Clear Choice Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner. Welcome back to PrepSpin.com. Mike Ritchie, Scott Willard, William Warfield. Great day for baseball up to this point. Chuck Stivers Field, 11th Region Baseball Tournament. Got a good one going on here, Coach. Madison Central 1, Woodford County 0 as we head to the top of the fifth inning. Yeah, and you know on these, these first day of regional tournament games where people are throwing their number one pitchers that uh, they're usually really, really tight games. And, you know, I've talked to my teams before about the fact that uh, most regional games are going to be 3-2, 4-3, 2-1, 1-0, one, one those type games. So that's, that's the kind of games you want to play during the season because you know that's the games you're going to have to play during the regional tournament. So Parker Thomas – Leading off the fifth inning for the Yellow Jackets, batting 267. 
Swing and a miss on a 2-0 off-speed pitch. Looks like he went back to the 2-0 changeup. Count goes to 2-1. and one. Parker Thomas struck out in the third inning. Probably should have let that one go with a count 2-0. <laughs> Bloops it out in left field. Richardson comes for the dive. Not going to get there in time, so a base hit off the bat of Parker Thomas. As he stops down at first base, and he turns it over to the top. Morgan Sheets. Yeah, and Morgan Sheets is uh... – Already bunted for a single today, so uh, never know if uh, Coach Royal is going to put the bunt on, the drag bunt, or let Sheets swing away. Kavanaugh in at third base, one step in the grass. First pitch, Sheets squares around the bunt. Here's the throwback. Thomas you know, back with, in easily. With the third baseman charging, the, the, the place to put this bunt is up the first base side. Now, if he can get it past Jeremy Lakes, he might he might get another base hit. Because Holbrook is deep at second. They're flipping it again. That was a strike call, so the count goes one and one to the leadoff hitter, Morgan Sheets. One for two in the ball game. Stranded out in third base in the third inning. Top of the fifth inning here. Lakes with the 1-1 pitch. He tries to push it, pops it up. Corey Mullins unable to run it down before it hits the dirt. You know, Coach, you were talking about it pretty much. Time intruded in the 11th region. To win it, you've got to win one ball game. That's a nail-biter. Maybe you shouldn't have won it or whatever. But back to that, you're going to have some close ball games. And like you say, it's very important through the season to play those close ball games to get your kind of – your guys accustomed and, to the pressure and playing in those type of games and uh, being able to, uh, you know, it, you know, it's easy when we take batting practice to get bunts down. Uh, now, you know, just like in this situation, a lot of times what determines you're going to win or lose the game if you can get bunts down like this, or if you on defense if you can field it and throw the guy out. Here's a two-two pitch to Sheets off on the. Pitch was Parker Thomas, and Sheets stays alive as he flips his bat into the baseball and fouls it back over top. The count stays at two and two. No outs here. We forgot a lefty warming up in the pen. We'll try to get his number and let you know who he is. 2-2 pitch, ground ball to Holbrook, over to Frazier for one. Morgan Sheets safe down at first base. So, fielder's choice for Sheets. 4-6 on the out of Parker Thomas down at second base for the first. That'll bring up Nate Beavers. Beavers 0-1 for 1 in the ball game. Flew out to the left fielder in the first inning. Sack bunt in the third. Sheets back just in time. Good throw over there from Jeremy Lakes. First pitch. That could be in the Ball gap. in the gap. It is run down by Ben Moore, and great job. And he flips it over to first base. Swafford's going to get it, and he tries to make the tag, and a great slide by Morgan Sheets as it goes around him. But i tell you what, what a nice play. Second one of the ball game. From Ben Morin, as he runs that thing down, I think everybody thought that ball was a gap ball to the wall. Yeah, as soon as I, as soon as it came off the bat, I said in the gap, and whoa, what a great play by Ben Morin going over there, just gliding over there, take, stealing a double. And the nice <laughs> thing about it is, not only does he make a nice play, but he throws a rocket over to Swafford at first base, and a great slide by Morgan Sheets. So that would have been a double play. Yeah, Beavers is thinking, what do I got to do here? <laughs> Blake He's, Hacker, the pitcher. Beavers thought he had a double. Hiker batting with two outs. Sheets down at first base. Lakes first pitch fouled straight back into the net. So Jeremy Lakes gets the sign. The count 0-1 to the opposing pitcher, Blake Hiker. Sheets down at first base. 
He's off on the pitch. Nice throw by Mullins and an easy out. Good job by Corey Mullins. I'll tell you what, we've seen two good plays on steal attempts. That one there, you can't get any easier than that. As he goes one to six for the third out of the inning. And we'll be back for the bottom of the fifth. Madison Central 1, Woodford County nothing here on prepspin.com. Back after this. By the numbers, Whitaker Bank loves the Kentucky communities we serve. Over 30,000 Kentuckians are saving time and money by doing their banking online with Whitaker Electronic Banking. 341,000 transactions were made on the go last year using the Whitaker Bank mobile app. Over 340,000 text alerts were sent last year with Whitaker Bank text banking. We share your passion, Kentucky. Love the bank that loves you back. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. The Kentucky Center for Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner, is now Clear Choice Orthodontics. Why the name change, you ask? Well, we believe that there is only one choice for all your orthodontics needs, and that choice is clear. Clear Choice Orthodontics. We offer a unique level of care for each smile in your family. We also feature the latest in Invisalign technology and Invisalign Teen. Put our award-winning experience to work for you. For a lifetime of beautiful smiles, come visit the most outstanding orthodontist in Kentucky, Clear Choice Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner. Welcome back to the 11th Region Baseball Tournament here at Chuck Stivers Field. You're watching the game on prepspin.com. First pitch. To the shortstop, the number nine hitter, Jacob Frazier, is fouled back. So the count, 0-1. Ball high. Blake Hacker still bringing it a little bit, isn't he, Coach? Yeah, he really, he really is. And, uh, you know, just, just like we said last thing, he looks like he's a lot more comfortable out there. Frazier hits it into right center field. On his horse is Alex Neff. Ball kept carrying on him. Almost the same spot where Ben Morin made his play, but Alex Neff didn't quite have the jump that Ben Morin did, and Jacob Frazier stand up double. And that's nothing against Alex Neff intended on that play, but Ben Morin kind of shows you that ball was almost in the same spot, and Ben Morin was able to run it, run it down. So a pinch runner. For Madison Central is Trey Eden. Pinch runner here in the fifth inning. I'm sorry, it's Blake Gross. Excuse me. His brother was a good player. Yes, he was. He kind of has a special memory in the heart of Scott County yeah. fans, doesn't he, over Tate's Creek. Man, a nice play up the middle. Yes, he did. <laughs> On Connor Showalter. Uh, now, you know, Coach Roof's got confidence in uh, Holbrook here to hit the ball to the right side. You know, he, he doesn't put the bun on. If he thinks he's good enough to go the other way and get the runner over and then give yourself a chance to get the base hit. Or, you know, or you could go conventional and bunt the guy to third base. One thing about it, Shortstop's covering, so there's a lot of room over there in the six hole. Squares the bunt, and it's going to be a pass ball. And Gross over to third base. Don't that have pass to. ball, wild pitch, Coach. Uh, I think that's a wild pitch. I mean, he hit off his gloves, so I bet it's way up. So. Well, you're our official scorer here on prepspin.com, so. I'll get wild pitch. There you go. A wild pitch in the books. The I, don't count. Like, I don't like giving bad stuff to catchers. There you go, 2-0. <laughs> oh. Gross. Out at third base. Thinking safety squeeze right here. Run the shortstop away. was thinking squeeze anyway as Morgan Sheets was almost at the pitcher's mound. Yeah, Woodford County's got the infield in. Don't feel like they can give up another run here. And he walks on four pitches. Now, Madison Central could really, you know, with the situation they're in, really break this thing open. Now, what happened – what, I'll tell you what Madison Central really likes to do here, first and third, and they did it against uh, – I've seen them do it before 
Now, if the infield's up, they won't even fake bunt to, to steal second with the, you know, because there's no, going to be nobody there to cover second base. They'll just straight steal second. A lot of times in this situation, Madison Central will fake, fake the bunt first and third to steal second base. So, Blake Gross down at third base. Joe Holbrook over at first base. Kavanaugh squares around. The pitch is high. And as in control, as we talked about, Blake Hiker in last inning, he's kind of lost a little bit. Yeah, Again, that's it, the pressure of high school baseball, isn't it, when you get two gave, runners on. Gave up that double and then, you know, came back, and now he's really having trouble on the – Holbrook finding a strike zone, and now Kavanaugh. You know, just the little fake bunt there is – there's going to be a run. And Blake Gross is in, and Holbrook goes down to second. You going to wild pitch that one again, Coach? Yeah. And, you know, it's – So, again, both runs have been scored by Jacob Frazier, and both of them – are yeah. unearned. Yeah, Gross Art. scored the second one on a running for Frazier. Now you look for Central here to, you know, the first thing that's going to happen is, you know, Hackers. 2-0 pitch called on the outside corner, strike it's gonna, one. It's going to make him throw a strike before they do anything. Now a good chance of moving him to third here, Coach, with the count two and one. Really is. Got Josh Wright, the number three hitter, on deck. Kavanaugh takes strike two call, two and two on the outside corner. So Blake Hiker regrouping just a little bit as he gets the count even at two and two. One run in here in the fifth inning. Madison Central extends their lead to two to nothing. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Nick Kavanaugh gets that one out in left center field. Is it going to be enough? It's going to be off the wall. And Kavanaugh with his speed, the easy stand-up double. And he's going to come to third. They're going to call him safe at third. So I'm going to give him a triple on that one, Coach. Yeah, I think uh, I would give him a double and went to third on the throw. So a two-base hit for Nick Cavanaugh goes to third on the throw. One RBI. And Blake Hacker is done for the day. They're going to bring in the right fielder. Matt Eldridge. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back with a new pitcher, all of his information, and much more here. Madison Central 3. Woodford County Zero on the prepspin.com. Summer Heroes Read. Summer Reading kicks off at Scott County Public Library May the 31st. Don't miss Superhero Story Times for Children. For teens, check out the White Hat Computer Hacking Class, Super Villain Costume Party, and Running the City Police Obstacle Course. Adults enjoy free Wi-Fi, computer access, books, movies, and music. Relax and recharge at the Scott County Public Library. Check us out at www.scottpublive.org. By the numbers, Whitaker Bank loves the Kentucky communities we serve. There are 50 Whitaker Bank locations serving Kentucky communities just like mine. 61 Whitaker Bank ATMs throughout Kentucky make getting quick access to cash easy. Whitaker Bank staff serves the needs of nearly 70,000 Kentucky customers every day. We share your passion, Kentucky. Love the bank that loves you back. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. The Kentucky Center for Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner, is now Clear Choice Orthodontics. Why the name change, you ask? Well, we believe that there is only one choice for all your orthodontics needs, and that choice is clear. Clear Choice Orthodontics. We offer a unique level of care for each smile in your family. We also feature the latest in Invisalign technology and Invisalign Teen. Put our award-winning experience to work for you. For a lifetime of beautiful smiles, come visit the most outstanding orthodontist in Kentucky, Clear Choice Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner. Welcome back here. A pitching change for Woodford County. That's going to be Matt Eldridge. He'll come in from right field. 
Eldridge on the season has pitched 32.23 innings. He's appeared in eight games, started six of those. He's 0-4 with the record on the season, an ERA of 3.64. Blake Hacker goes out and plays center field. And Robinette goes out to play right field. You know, it's important for uh, Woodford County to cut this run off to try to keep it a three-run game, and it's important for Madison Central on the other side to make sure they do something to get that fourth run across. You know, that, that thing's – the fourth run, I, th I think the, the, the fourth – get four ahead where that grand slam doesn't beat you uh, is always an important – something that you need to – Make sure you always keep in mind that Eldridge comes in. He comes in a little, you know, didn't little you know, did, little, didn't have a lot of time to warm up because you can see he was uh, really trying to do all he could to make sure he got his arm loose. I don't think he was the guy that was really throwing down in the bullpen last inning. So the count three and one. Mr. Offense right here. Just like I said, Woodford or Madison Central loves with that first and third to fake the bunt and steal the guy to second base. There's the bunt. And just like that. Give him a stolen base down to second base. As this innings kind of went to a crawl. Runners at second and third. Nick Cavanaugh down at third base. Josh Wright down at second base. Ben Morin, the center fielder, 0 for 2 in the ball game. Batting 371. That means he's due. He's ahead in the count. 1-0. Here's the pitch from Eldridge. Curveball, strike one. Infield in. Woodford County down three to three to nothing. They can't let another run in, can they, Coach? No, they got the infield up and you know, the way Lakes is throwing, you know, he's given up three hits on the day. He's been all around the plate. You know, he hadn't been – like he hadn't been wild or, you know, out there just, you know, not giving his defense a chance. So, uh, you know, Lakes has been in control of what's going on out there. And, uh, you know, if Woodford County wants a chance, uh, they got to find some way to wiggle out of this – wiggle out of this jam. So the count's two and one. To Ben Morin. Outside three and one. So one pitch away from loading the bases is Matt Eldridge. And a lot of times, Coach, when you see a team that's favored gets a couple of run lead and all of a sudden the pressure's off and they, they start realize. free swinging and then they put up a big spot as Morin has walked as well. So that'll load the bases for Austin Alexander, the designated hitter. 0 for 1 in the ball game, walked in the second inning, struck out in the fourth, batting 333 on the season. No outs in the inning. Big opportunity here for the Indians of Madison Central. You know, in this inning, has been two doubles and three walks. And Eldridge ball in front of the plate again. A good job by Hunter Hilbert the catcher for Woodford County. He does what you're supposed to do. Yeah, Don't worry about catching it. Just try to block it. it. And he dropped it and blocked it right out. Boy, it landed so softly out in front of him. It was a perfect job by Hilbert. So out of the windup, he squares the bunt, taking all the way, and ball two. Now, Hilbert's probably thinking, let's get some pitches over the plate. <laughs> yeah, we realize they're not going <laughs> to hit. They're not going to hit the balls. Let's start throwing some strikes. I think Alexander's taking all the way, don't you, Coach? Yes. And a lot of times when you can't get your fastball over, that was a good job by Whitford County right there. They called the breaking ball. Yep. It's like, okay, you're having a tough time locating your fastball 2-0. -oh, we'll go breaking ball. So the count 2-1, and one, no outs. Base is full of Indians. Corners in. And he swings through that. Breaking ball, and the count evens up two and two. You knew probably he was going to get it again after, 
you know, he thrown two fastballs for balls, threw his curveball for a strike. He knew he was probably going to get the curveball right back again. That one right there, that was a curveball. <laughs> he could have drove to right field and said he tried to drive it out to left. 2-2 two, two pitch. Might as well come three in a row, and he does. And the strikeout swinging for the first out of the inning. And I tell you what, Coach, that was a big pitch right there by Eldridge. Big sequence there. After going 2-0, curveball, 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 three strikes. That will bring up Isaac Swafford. The first baseman, 0 for 3 in the ball, 0 for 2 in the ball game. Excuse me. Don't be surprised if uh, Madison Central doesn't squeeze right here. And Woodford County's working, the pitchers working out of the windup, so to give them a good, good opportunity to get a really good jump off, off third base. And coach, I was going to ask you with Swafford batting from the left side, is that an advantage to the offense or the defense well, on the squeeze? You know, just if you break at the right time, it doesn't. Hilbert's, Hilbert's earned his money back here today. He's doing, a great, he's doing a great job blocking pitches. He needs he's to get gone. a double <laughs> dose of lunches or something because he's earned his money this last inning. He's calling time out. Now, look. <laughs> I love you, but. <laughs> Let's throw it over the plate. Yeah. And you don't have valuable, uh, a good catcher and a, and a guy that can block pitches like Hilbert's doing back there today. Well, the thing about your coach, team. he's had four or five balls that could have got past him, and that's three more runs easy. Right. And these guys, I'm telling you, with guys throwing the ball up that he's got to jump for and balls that he's got to block, that's that's not easy to catch. So here's the 2-0 pitch. Ball low. 3-0 and is the count to the first baseman, Isaac Swafford. The bases are full. You've got Kavanaugh down at third base. Josh Wright out at second. Ben Moore and over at first base. Back-to-back -back walks. And the 3-0 pitch is called inside corner, strike one. It's been a long fifth inning, especially the bottom here. As the Indians have scored two and have bases loaded. Curveball. That's a tough pitch right there, three and one curveball in the dirt. That'll get Kavanaugh in, right to go to third, more and out to second. And Isaac Swafford will get a walk with an RBI, Coach. Easiest RBI you can get, and that will bring up Seth Richardson, the left fielder. Hit by pitch in the second, a double in the fourth. You know, the thing that you know, I would mentioned earlier about maybe the possibility of uh, – you know, talked about squeezing and all that stuff. But a lot of times these pitchers don't throw enough strikes where you can consistently – uh, think about maybe squeezing. The first pitch to Richardson called strike one. Fastball right down the gut. Eldridge off-speed pitch. And Allison gives him that one. I thought that yeah. one rolled over a little high. But Scott Allison's probably tired of calling balls too, Coach. Oh, yeah, he's probably. So Eldridge ahead in the count, 0-2. Oh one out, bases full of Indians. Fastball high. He reared back a little bit on that one. Curveball outside and a great job again by Hilbert. There's no way he could have got his body there to block it, so he went with a went with a backhand route and did a good job. I mean, he saved a lot of pitches. Tell you what, it's, it's fun to watch. I, mean, I know it's tough on him, but it's fun to watch the ability he does behind the plate there. He's blocking and working hard. There's a line drive. A good try there by Morgan Sheets as he tried to flip it over to Nate Beavers to get Ben Morin out at second base, but he gets back, and that's going to be an L6 for Richardson, the second out of the inning. That will bring up Corey Mullins, the catcher. Mullins 0 for 2, struck out in the second, unassisted on a nice play by Clay Roush in the fourth inning for the third out. Kept a run from scoring. So first pitch from Eldridge, curveball outside and high. Ball one. You know, this is, to me, it's a really important at bat. You know, you get up five or six, it's almost past the point of no return for Woodford, but if you can halt, keep it to four, uh, you know, they still got a shot. 
Well, Grand Slam can win it for you or tie it for you, and that's what you're looking for. That's kind of the magic number of four. Corey Mullins, the ninth batter of the inning for the Indians. They find themselves three runs in the inning, four for the ball game. Corey Mullins, I think that was safe to say. That was right across the eyes. One and two the count. You know, the one thing I'd heard about Woodford County coming in is that, uh, you know, they had three to four really good pitchers that uh, that, that could throw velocity-wise with anybody in this region. And you can see right now this, this young man is – can do it too, and he's got good stuff, got good breaking ball, good velocity on his fastball, just the same as Hacker did. In the Fans wanted that third strike, off-speed pitch, curveball just outside, according to the umpire, Scott Allison. The fans in the stands trying to help the umpire out. He goes fastball, hard shot through the glove of Morgan Sheets. Two runs are going to come in. Josh Wright's going to score. Ben Morin's going to score. Isaac Swafford over at third. And Corey Mullins with a two-out RBI, two-RBI single, advance on the throw. Isaac Swaffer gets down to third base. In to score, Ben Morin and Josh Wright. And that was a huge, huge hit right there for Madison Central. Trey Eden, the courtesy runner, out at second base for the catcher. I told you Trey Eden was going to get in the ball game, Coach. This is Frazier, I think, re-entering. I think he got out to second and got the uh, got the let off the inning with a double and got the pinch runner, and now he's re-entering. Hey. No, it's fine. Sorry for the interruption. When they ask announcers if we want something to drink, the answer is always yes. So Jacob Frazier re-enters back into the ball game. He got a double to lead off the inning. Started this all off. So the tenth batter of the inning for the Indians. Trey Eden, courtesy running out for Corey Mullins. The big two out, two RBI single. Runners at second and third for the Indians. You know, as a coach, you're sitting there at, you know, through four innings, one nothing. You're thinking, you know, anything can happen on both sides. And then, yep. you know, from the Madison Central perspective right here, it's a, it's a, it's a, like a huge weight off their shoulders and a, and a whole lot of, a lot more relaxation when you got six on the board now, five in this inning. Matt Eldridge continued to use that curveball as his strike pitch. Count two and oh, he delivers a curveball strike one. Two outs here, a lot of damage done. Five runs in the inning for the Indians. Hard shot. Good job of Nate Beavers over to Roush for the third out of the inning. But the damage is done as Madison Central scores five runs. So through five complete, Madison Central six, Woodford County zero. We'll be back for the sixth inning here on prepspin.com. 11th Region Baseball back after this. Scott County Physical Therapy is a privately owned physical therapy practice specializing in outpatient orthopedics, sports and industrial rehab, neurological rehabilitation, low back pain, neck pain, and arthritic conditions. Our mission is to provide the highest quality physical therapy to assist each individual and the community at large. Scott County Physical Therapy, a journey to wellness. To contact the physical therapist and Scott County Physical Therapy, please dial 502-863-4242. Scott County Physical Therapy is the title sponsor for Scott County Athletics. By the numbers, Whitaker Bank loves the Kentucky communities we serve. Whitaker Bank supports 496 Kentucky schools. Over 282,000 students benefit from Whitaker Bank's Kentucky education initiatives. Whitaker Bank has contributed almost $441,000 to education programs for the advancement of Kentucky's youth. We share your passion, Kentucky. Love the bank that loves you back. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. So welcome back to the 11th Region Baseball Tournament. 
Madison Central six, Woodford County zero. A new pitcher on the mound for the Indians is number 20, Kyle Kelsey, right-handed junior. Jeremy Lakes has moved over to play shortstop. And now playing first base, number three, Griffin Hotchkiss. So leading off for the Yellow Jackets in the top of the sixth inning is going to be Blake Hacker, the center fielder. Started out pitching, went to center field in the fifth inning. Great play by Griffin Hotchkiss over there in foul territory for the first out of the inning. Wow. Now batting the designated hitter, number 20, Colin Enlow, 0 for 2 of the ball game. Flew out to center field in the second, ground out to the shortstop, Jacob Frazier, in the fourth. Ground ball, a great play by Kavanaugh at third base. Over to Hotchkiss, two up, two down. And the Indians, a little hop in the step after that five-run fifth inning. That'll bring up Andy Keever, the third baseman. Where's number 99? Reached on an error in the second, a single in the fourth. So Kelsey has pitched 41 innings, appeared in seven game or 12 games. He's five and one on the season, ERA of 1.58. As Coach Nick Barty comes out, don't know what in the world he wants to talk about. His pitcher's in. They're just getting him some action. They're going to take him out. New pitcher for the Indians is number nine, Trey Sexton. Trey Sexton, a right-hander, junior pitcher for the Indians. We'll get you his stats for you real quick. Trey Sexton has pitched in 16 innings in the season. 14 games. He's oh, he's 1 and 0 oh on the season with a 1.75 ERA. So they keep bringing out arms. Kelsey goes 2 thirds of an inning. 6 to nothing is the score. It was scoreless to the bottom of the third inning where Madison Central was able to score one run. It remained 1 to nothing until the bottom of the 5th where the Indians were able to score 5 as they sent 10 batters to the plate. Started off by Jacob Frazier, who had a double into the gap in right center field. Blake Gross wound up scoring. And Frazier made the last out of that inning. First pitch from Trey Sexton, strike one. Line drive right back to Sexton. Can't do any better than that, so L1, third out of the inning. Three up, three down for the Woodford County Yellow Jackets. 
through six and a half. Six to nothing, Madison Central. We'll be back for the bottom of the sixth inning here on the, the Kentucky region. Center for Orthodontics, home of Doctors Durbin, Wong, and Gardner is now Clear Choice Orthodontics. Why the name change, you ask? Well, we believe that there is only one choice for all your orthodontics needs, and that choice is clear. Clear Choice Orthodontics. We offer a unique level of care for each smile in your family. We also feature the latest in Invisalign technology and Invisalign Teen. Put our award-winning experience to work for you. For a lifetime of beautiful smiles, come visit the most outstanding orthodontist in Kentucky, Clear Choice Orthodontics, home of Drs. Durbin, Wong, and Gardner. By the numbers, Whitaker Bank loves the Kentucky communities we serve. Whitaker Bank supports 496 Kentucky schools. Over 282,000 students benefit from Whitaker Bank's Kentucky education initiatives. Whitaker Bank has contributed almost $441,000 to education programs for the advancement of Kentucky's youth. We share your passion, Kentucky. Love the bank that loves you back. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. Welcome back for the bottom of the sixth inning. Mike Ritchie, William Warfield, we're PrepSpin.com. Proud to be bringing you 11th Region Baseball action on the Internet all day long. This is the second game of four scheduled for today. We're at Chuck Stivers Field. Henry Clay High School, Joe Holbrook leading off the bottom of the six for the Indians. First pitch from Eldridge popped straight back. Strike one. Matt Eldridge still on the mound for Woodford County. He came in in the fifth inning as he replaced Blake Hacker, who went out to center field, curveball. Probably his best pitch all day long to get over for strikes has been that curveball. Holbrook walked twice, sacrificed bunt for the leadoff hitter for the Indians. Fouls straight back again, one and two the count. Great day for baseball at this point. A lot of fans here at Henry Clay High School. (laughs) Here's the one-two pitch, curveball. Popped up, Clay Roush goes back for the Yellow Jackets at first base, makes the play. Good job. That'll bring up Nick Cavanaugh, the third baseman, batting 296 on the season. Great day today. Struck out in the first, walked, stranded, or thrown out at home in the third inning. Had an RBI double in the fifth and later scored. Good defensive play by Nick Cavanaugh in the last inning. Curveball, swing and a miss, strike one. Getting a lot of help from the fans here. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Fastball. Probably would have been a strike, but I think it was a mix-up right there. Hunter Hilbert thought that might have been a breaking ball. Kind of cuffed him a little bit. And that's going to get a free walk for Hunter Hilbert. Out to the mound to talk to Matt Eldridge. He's saying one for fastball, two for curveball. Here's the 1-1 pitch with one out. Good job by Nick Cavanaugh. Takes the curveball and punches it out in the hole between first and second. Textbook swing right there. That'll bring up Josh Wright, the right fielder. Over two in the day. Ground out to the second baseman in the first inning. An error by Beavers in the third inning. Walked and scored in the fifth. Also stole second. Josh Wright, left-handed hitting. Right fielder. First pitch swinging. He gets that one to the short porch. Off the wall at the 321 sign. Cavanaugh off to the races at third. Coach Withers is going to hold him up. And Josh Wright, stand-up double off the wall in right field. 
as the Indians. Like we talked about earlier when Coach Willer was here, that ball game's close, 1-0, nothing to nothing. It's a lot harder to swing. But when you're the favorite team and you look up and you get a five, six-run lead, all of a sudden it's a lot easier, no pressure. You just play baseball. And one thing about Madison Central, the Indians, when they just play baseball, they're pretty good. They've got runners at second and third. Josh Wright down at second. Kavanaugh over at third base. That will bring up Ben Moore, and they're going to intentionally walk him. Intentional walk for the number four here to the center fielder, Ben Moore, and that will bring up Austin Alexander. Tough day for Mr. Alexander. He walked in the second, back-to-back strikeouts in the fourth and fifth inning. Matt Eldridge from the windup. Curveball strike one. The Indians looking to find a way to score four runs here and end this ball game. Matt Eldridge continues to use that curveball as his strike pitch for the day. Trouble locating the fastball, but a pretty good job with that curveball up to this point. Three hits for the Yellow Jackets, six hits for the Indians. Fastball just missed outside. And again, he hits the mitt right where the catcher is sta- is setting, but the catcher is about six inches outside. 2-1 is the count. Foul tip, but Alexander stays alive. I'd like to give a shout-out to the Henry Clay Athletic Department. Great job here hosting PrepSpin.com. Amanda Christensen, the athletic director, Jordan Tarrance, the head coach. Uh-oh, Alexander gets that one, and it goes off the wall again. Kavanaugh is coming in. Josh Wright, or Ben Warren is coming in. So Kavanaugh scores. Josh Wright scores. Ben Morin is going to stop at third base. And Austin Alexander, a double off the wall. Two RBIs. That will bring out the pitching coach and Matt Eldridge is done for the day. They're going to hand the ball over to. We'll get his number for you here in just a second. As soon as the coach gets done talking to him. (laughs) Looks like it's going to be the second baseman, Nate Beavers. We'll confirm that. Yes, it's going to be Nate Beavers who comes in to pitch in the sixth inning. Out at second base is going to be number eight for Woodford County. That's going to be Michael Losh. So Matt Eldridge is done for the day. Michael Losh will go into the eighth spot. So on the season, looking at the stats for Nate Beavers, he's been on the mound quite a bit. He's pitched 38 and a third innings. He's faced 166 batters. He's appeared in nine games, started six of those. His record, two and five on the season. However, his ERA is 1.6. Pretty tough when you're a pitcher with a 1.6 ERA and you look up and your record on the season is two and five. So batting four. Madison Central is number three. Griffin Hotchkiss. 
Griffin's made a couple of good plays, one of them on the foul territory over behind the dugout. Shout out to some of our sponsors, Rebound Orthopedics, Dr. Lyon over in Frankfurt, Scott County Physical Therapy, Scott County Public Library, Clear Choice Orthodontics, home of Dr. Durbin, Wong, and Garner, and also Whitaker Bank as Beavers. Rocks and fires with runners on second and third. Off-speed pitch, outside corner, strike one. <coughs> Fastball swinging down the right field line. And the ball hits the dirt. Good hustle out there by Mason Robinette. Just couldn't get there. Like we say, two more games here today on PrepSpin.com. Western Hills versus LCA at four. Henry Clay versus Model at seven. Here's the 0-2 pitch from Beavers. Curveball, and Hotchkiss stays alive. Moore down at third base. Alexander at second. Ball one outside. Eight to nothing is the score. Hotchkiss, if he's able to get a run in here, base hit might score two and in this ball game, infield in for the Yellow Jackets. Beavers, hard shot to Michael Loesch. He holds the runner and flips it over to Clay Roush for the first out of the inning. Right ideal by Griffin Hotchkiss. That's a second out, excuse me. Seth Richardson, the left fielder batting for the Indians now. Seth Richardson hit by pitch, a double, and a line drive to the shortstop. And there's the line drive to the shortstop, just like I said. He hit the ball on the screw, so two good shots, one off the bat of Griffin Hotchkiss and one off the bat of Seth Richardson for the third out of the inning. But the Indians score two runs to increase the lead to 8 to nothing. We'll come back for the top of the seventh and Woodford County's last chance here on PrepSpin.com. We'll be back right after this. Scott County Physical Therapy is a privately owned physical therapy practice specializing in outpatient orthopedics, sports and industrial rehab, neurological rehabilitation, low back pain, neck pain, and arthritic conditions. Our mission is to provide the highest quality physical therapy to assist each individual and the community at large. Scott County Physical Therapy, a journey to wellness. To contact the physical therapist and Scott County Physical Therapy, please dial 502-863-4242. Scott County Physical Therapy is the title sponsor for Scott County Athletics. Welcome back to the 11th Region Baseball Tournament here on PrepSpin.com. Mike Ritchie along with William Warfield, new pitcher in for the Indians in the seventh inning, Alex Georgel. A six foot, 170 pound senior pitching for the Indians. New catcher for the Indians as well is number 13, Austin Alexander. I think that's a 13. Is it a 13 or an 18? Can't really tell. I might. So catching is number 13, Austin Alexander. Looking at Alex Georgel's pitching stats. He's pitched in 23 and a third innings. He's three and one on the season, ERA of 3.60.
Now batting Hunter Hilbert. 0 for 1 in the ball game. Walked in the second. Ground ball and a nice play by Kavanaugh in the fourth. Last chance for the Yellow Jackets. They're down 8 to nothing. Here's the pitch from Georgia. High, and he goes three balls in a row. 3-0 the count to the catcher, Hunter Hilbert. Great job behind the plate for that young man today. Taking all the way, fastball, strike one. Ball four, free pass for Hunter Hilbert. That's probably going to get a courtesy runner in. They're going to let him run. So courtesy running is Harrison Keith. He ran for Hunter Hilbert in the second inning. Clay Roush, the first baseman, 0 for 1 in the ball game, flew out to the left fielder, hit by pitch his second time up. Have a pinch hitter, Austin Burris, on deck. He's going to hit it for Michael Loesch, who went in to play second base when they took Matt Eldridge out of the ball game. Pitch from Georgia right down the pipe. Strike one. One and one is the count. No outs here in the top of the seventh inning. Madison Central in control, up eight to nothing. Looking to advance to take on the Sayre Spartans, who upset the Lafayette Generals six to two in the first game here in the 11th region tournament today. Two good ball games coming up for you. Western Hills taking on LCA at four. Henry Clay in the nightcap taking on Model. Foul straight back. The count goes to one and two. Struck him out, Clay Roush, for the first out in the seventh. That'll bring up the pinch hitter, number 14, Austin Burris. It's been a long two innings as the Indians scores five in the fifth, two in the sixth to blow this ball game wide open. The lead is eight to nothing. One out here, runner at first base. And Harrison Keith, the courtesy runner, who came in for Hunter Hilbert, who walked. First pitch to Austin Burris, called strike one. Georgia with the pickoff play. Back easy is Keith. Georgia with the catcher set up outside. Fouled straight back. Count 0 and 2. Scott Allison still on the hops. O2 pitch. Ball hit hard. Ben Moore and off to the races runs it down. Great job out there by Ben Moore, and you can see why he is one of the better center fielders in the area. Second out of the inning. They're going to have a pitching change. Speaking of that, Ben Moore has been 
voted to represent the senior All-Stars for the 11th region, along with Aaron McGeorge and Jordan Fusey. There's no senior All-Star game, just recognition, but a good job, and congrats to him. New pitcher in the ball game for the Indians. We'll get his number for you. His number is 10. His name is Zach Vol. 6'5". Senior. Zach Vol, V-O-L-L. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correct. If not, I apologize. Zach Valls pitched in 30 and a third innings, appeared in nine games, started seven, five and one on the season, 1.615. <coughs> Pretty much every pitcher that Madison Central brings in has a very good record and also sub two ERA. Two outs in the inning, waiting to bat four. Woodford County is Parker Thomas, the left fielder. One for two in the ball game, struck out in the third, singled in the fifth, and was forced out at second base. Here's the first pitch. Line drive right to the shortstop. Jeremy Lakes for the last out of the ball game. And your final line score. For Woodford County, no runs, three hits, two errors for Madison Central. Eight runs, seven hits, three errors. So Madison Central will advance to take on the Sarah Spartans right here at Chuck Stivers Field tomorrow night at 6 p.m. in our first semifinal game. First semifinal game has been set. We'll come back at 4 o'clock, about 45 minutes away. We'll be back for the third game of four today as the winners of the 41st District, the Wolverines of Western Hills, will take on the 43rd District Runner-up, Lexington Christian Eagles. Again, hope you can join us for the call from William Warfield. That game will be started at approximately 4 p.m. right here on PrepSpin.com. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and see you in about 45 minutes.